We did a Trader Joe's grocery haul, but not just any ordinary grocery haul. You see, we went to Trader Joe's and we got all kinds of select keto foods, but not all of them are truly keto friendly. Some of them are sneaky. And I wanted to do this because it's true and practical. It's the kind of situations that people run into when they're shopping in a healthy sense and they don't always know what they're getting their hands on. So buried in this pile of food are keto foods that really shouldn't be on your keto shopping list. So we're making it realistic. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in to the keto grocery haul for Trader Joe's. Now, cool thing is, I did this one a little bit differently. You see, this was my hometown Trader Joe's. I didn't want to go in and risk getting kicked out and then later on make a big scene when I come back into the store with my wife and kids and people are like, hey, that's the guy that got kicked out. So did it a little bit more discreetly. Had my camera guy follow me in. We got some footage of me grabbing the items, but we're taking it back here to a controlled environment in my studio where I can actually explain the scientific benefits and cons of each individual item. So let's go ahead and dive in. Please hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications. So where do we begin? Well, let's go ahead and let's start uh, here. All right, Trader Joe's now has an interesting form of almond milk. Nice thing is, usually you're paying a pretty penny for this kind of stuff. This is going to be pure almonds and water, nothing else. No stabilizers, no thickeners, no carrageenan, anything like that. So it makes life really, really easy. Okay, normally you're gonna go to Whole Foods and you're gonna spend like $6 for an almond milk that's really simple. Save some money when you get that at Trader Joe's. So cool little keto item that Trader Joe's now has. Okay, now I wanna jump into some interesting stuff. I wanna talk about beef for a second because I think this is a really important thing to mention. When you shop for beef at Trader Joe's, you have to remember that they don't have grass-fed, grass-finished beef. So it's interesting because you look at the organic ground beef and you normally want to lean towards that. And then you have a 96% lean non-organic ground beef. So at first glance, you're like, well, I want the organic and it's higher fat, it's good for keto. Well, it says no antibiotics and no added hormones, 100% grass-fed, but it doesn't say it's grass-finished, and it doesn't say no antibiotics ever. Okay, so what that tells us is that this is predominantly still grain-fed. It was just grain-fed organic grain. But because the fat content is so high, it's going to have all of the omega-6s from the grain in that fat content. So believe it or not, in this particular case, it's better to go for the non-grass-fed 96% lean because then the actual fat content, the actual amount of omega-6 that you're taking in is actually going to be less. So it sounds complicated, but the point is, when it comes to Trader Joe's, go for the lean 96 beef versus the organic. It sounds crazy to hear that coming from the guy that's always touting grass-fed, grass-finished. It's just, you gotta pick your poison in this case. So this one, sorry, keeping this guy. Okay, well, let's stay in the meat department while we're there. Now we've got ground pork. This is a relatively new item from Trader Joe's. And in contrast to the beef, look at no antibiotics ever, no added hormones ever. Okay, now technically not organic in this case, but the reason that I like ground pork is because it's just something different for breakfast. Okay, you can mix this up, add a little bit of oregano, some Italian seasonings. You don't be having to have eggs all the time. So this is a unique item that Trader Joe's has because it's pretty darn clean ground pork in the grand scheme of things. So that made my list. Okay, now we have to look at the chicken. This is interesting, so get ready. Ground chicken. Their ground chicken is really good. Even their non-organic ground chicken isn't bad. They do have some organic ground turkey, but they don't have organic ground chicken. Chicken is usually cleaner than turkey when it comes down to uh, just the antibiotics and everything like that. The conditions in which chickens are raised are not exactly great, but compared to turkey, they live a pretty high life. Uh, cool thing about this stuff, only a couple ingredients ground chicken, buffered vinegar, and rosemary extract. I like that they use vinegar and the acetic acid in vinegar as an antibacterial rather than giving them antibiotics. Really solid stuff, so that actually makes my list. It is easy to fall victim to some of the easy to eat meat items that are in uh, Trader Joe's. For example, there's simply roast chicken breast. Looks like it's simply roasted chicken, but then I flip it over, cooked chicken breast. Okay, water, soy protein isolate, salt, cane sugar, olive oil, natural flavoring. Okay, that's not really chicken. And if I, I don't really want extra soy in there and I don't really want cane sugar. So this one is kind of a maybe, moderation. So I'm gonna put it here underneath the chicken so that it's kind of in moderation. Then we have the balsamic vinegar and they also have a lemon chicken one. Again, we look at the ingredients. 
grilled chicken breast, at least that's the first ingredient, okay, balsamic canola oil, salt, cane sugar, okay, then they add more cane sugar in the broth, maltodextrin, yeast extract, onion powder, that's not bad, honey, white wine, but long story short, cellulose, gel, gum, xanthan, a ton of stuff. Just as a matter of contrast, here's what I want to show you. You look at this and you think, oh, that's not that bad. That's just good, healthy chicken, chicken breast. It's pre-cooked. And then you look at this and normally you'd say, oh, that's processed deli meat. That's bad. That's prosciutto. That's processed. All the ingredients I just listed off in this compared to bad processed meat, right? Ingredients, ham and salt. Okay, so the point is, is that it's not always what it seems. I would eat this before I'd eat this. So this goes to the bottom of the pile. The ground chicken takes the cake on that one, and then of course the prosciutto just when you're in a pinch. Now in order to get a lot of protein with this, of course you'd be consuming a total just dump truck load of sodium, but still, it's a point. This is really good keto food. Get this one. This is the Trader Joe's brand, and it's just ham and salt makes things really easy. I'm gonna put it here on the meat pile. All right. Then we go further on down the line. Let's talk about fish for a second while we're here talking about meat. Okay, they have a bunch of different uh, canned fish options. Okay, they have all kinds of different salmons. I picked this sockeye salmon, this wild caught Pacific salmon, because A, it's wild caught, but B, because it's a higher fat content. Now normally, when I'm saying to get meats, I suggest getting leaner meats so that you can get your fats coming from other sources. But Trader Joe's has good quality actual salmon in a can. When it comes down to salmon, if it's wild caught, operative words there, wild caught, you can get it with higher fat content because that's more omega-3s. So this can has seven grams per serving versus the other ones having 0.5 and one. So a lot more fat, a lot more caloric density out of this kind of canned salmon. Okay, another piece that I always get is going to be oysters. Okay, now these aren't Trader Joe's brand, but they have them at Trader Joe's. They're Crown Prince. Thing to know about oysters, okay, very high in zinc. In fact, the world's highest natural source of zinc, okay, oysters are. So very, very good for male testosterone, very, very good for the thyroid when it comes down to women. Now, one thing to note, carb content is a little bit higher in oysters, so you wanna use them in moderation. Usually these are in olive oil, so just be careful. Usually give them a bath, rinse them out so you're not getting a bunch of extra calories. So super solid stuff there. Then we have sardines. I go for the unsalted ones. Why? Because you don't need the extra salt and sardines already have a decent amount of sodium in it naturally. So you're usually pretty darn good. Get them in water over oil whenever possible, okay? Again, don't need to add the extra oils in, especially when you have the perfect omega-3 fatty acid profile in sardines as is, okay? Plus you wanna get them with the bone whenever possible. That way you're getting the vitamin D and you're getting the, uh, the skin if you can too. That's got more vitamin D and more nutrient value and more of the healthy fats. So get them in water whenever possible. And just so that you guys do know, if you don't have Trader Joe's around or you wanna get this stuff elsewhere, a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about that's not necessarily the perishables, like the refrigerated stuff, but like the, the sardines and all, all that kind of stuff, you can get at Thrive Market. So I did put a link down below for Thrive Market and there I have my special keto boxes and my intermittent fasting boxes. So Thrive Market is an online grocery store. So it makes it so that you can go online, get your groceries, get them delivered right to your doorstep. You don't even have to go to the grocery store. So a lot of the things I'm talking about, you could get at Thrive, specifically the canned fish, because they use uh, Wild Planet, which is a very, very good company when it comes down to sustainable and wild caught canned fish. So salmon, sardines, anchovies, all that kind of stuff that's great for keto. But anyway, Thrive Market's gonna be the place to go if you don't have a Trader Joe's or you wanna get some of this stuff. Again, a lot of the options I'm talking about, you can get there. So special link down below in the description to check out my keto grocery box and my fasting grocery boxes. All right, let's go ahead and let's move on down the line a little bit more. Okay, still staying in the refrigerated section. These are a solid go-to. I go for just the simple single serve guacamole packets. If I get it in a bigger container, it's way too easy to overdo it. 100 calories in a little packet, nine grams of fat, I'm good to go. Super simple, definitely a solid Trader Joe's option. Now, goat milk brie. I love brie cheese. Okay, brie cheese is my jam when it comes down to cheeses. But I also know that when you're looking at cheeses, you're looking at heavy beta casins, you're looking at different things that are going to have inflammatory responses within the body. The BCM7, beta casomorphin 7, is highly addictive. And if you get goat cheese, you have a higher level of what's called A2 casein protein, which is much less addictive. Yes, cheese is addictive. 
and much better for you as far as triggering a lesser inflammatory response within the body. This stuff is soft ripened, so I like that Trader Joe's has this because it's goat cheese made into a brie form. So it's spreadable, you can spread it on some, uh, some almond flour bread or anything like that that you make. It's just amazing, amazing stuff. So really solid there. Now, additionally, Trader Joe's has some organic bone broth. If you are someone that does intermittent fasting, this is going to be a tremendous way to break your fast. Okay, this one is beef bone broth, high glutamine content, high collagen content, proline, arginine, and glycine, the amino acids that you need to really start healing your gut. If you're doing intermittent fasting and you're doing keto, you already have a pretty powerful stem cell effect that's going on that's helping you heal your gut. This is going to help. And normally you're gonna pay an arm and a leg for bone broth. This is actually very reasonably priced at Trader Joe's. And it's important for me to note too, all the things that I'm talking about here, you could probably get at other places, but Trader Joe's does have cool options, unique options that are uniquely priced. So that's what I like about it. But again, mentioning Thrive Market, I, I tried to grab things that you could also get at Thrive Market in terms of the non-perishable. So make sure you do check that out after this video. All right, let's move on down the line here. Uh, I threw these in here because I like that uh, Trader Joe's has frozen zucchini spirals. Makes it really easy just to be able to have some bolognese, have some spaghetti sauce, and throw it on there. Just, I don't know, keep yourself feeling alive. Uh, this particular frozen blend of veggies is pretty cool. So here we have broccoli florets, organic peas, French green beans, zucchini, some onions, parsley, garlic, and some other little vegetables. You don't have to, uh, you can take the seasoning that's with it and kind of drain it out because it does have a tiny bit of maltodextrin, so just fair warning. But the carb content is super low for the amount of potassium that you're getting in this mix, which is one of the reasons why I like it. So for keto, you're losing a lot of minerals. I like replenishing my potassium so that my body can work really well. So that makes the cut for sure. All right. I'm a big fan of seaweed snacks, okay, and I talk about them a lot because seaweed is very high in iodine. When it comes to the thyroid on keto, we have to take care of it, okay? Our thyroid level is what determines our metabolism. We want to make sure that the thyroid is staying nice and active. It requires iodine, and iodine is really hard to get unless you're eating a lot of iodized salt, which I don't recommend. So this is good stuff for that. But caution, okay? Seaweed and expeller pressed canola oil, okay? So you're getting a bunch of the other oils that are counteracting a lot of the positive benefits of keto to begin with. Okay, so I don't recommend eating a bunch of these because of that canola oil. But you see they have the wasabi one and the regular one. The wasabi one, it's out. Okay, too much maltodextrin, too much cornstarch. It's already death by a thousand cuts because we've got the canola oil in there. Just 86 that one and go for the roasted seaweed with sea salt without the wasabi in this case. All right, now we move into cottage cheese. If you've seen my videos before, I talk about cottage cheese and I'm not anti-cottage cheese. But there's one sneaky thing that's at Trader Joe's that, I don't know, there's a few sneaky things, but this particular one, cottage cheese, organic cottage cheese. Well, I think the only thing that, about it that's organic is the actual dairy itself because we've got <laughs> organic low-fat milk, then we've got tricalcium phosphate, locust bean gum, carbon dioxide, carrageenan, citric acid, vitamin A palmitate, and then we go into the acidophilus and the bifidus cultures. The carrageenan alone is enough for me to be like, okay, why am I spending extra money on organic when it still has all the negative stuff in there that's gonna ruin keto for me anyway? I would throw this one, but it would explode. So I'm gonna gently set it off to the side. That's a no-go. Greek yogurt. I love Greek yogurt in moderation, but there's something that you need to know about Trader Joe's Greek yogurt brand. Okay, it is unusually higher carb, even for the unsweetened form. So this particular one, 10 grams of carbs in a 227 gram or one cup serving. You compare that to like Faya Greek yogurt and it's like six or seven. Why are there more carbs in here? Is it not cultured as much so there's still more active sugar? I don't really know. And it doesn't quite honestly taste like normal Greek yogurt. It's really thin. So I wanted to put this here because a lot of people think Greek yogurt's just fair game on keto, but it adds up. If I were to eat this whole thing, let's see, that'd be 20 grams of carbs. That's half my carb allotment right then and there with no fiber, pure net carbs there. So this one, unfortunately, ladies and gents, I gotta put it off to the side. Can't throw that one either. All right, let's keep on moving on down the line. Okay, so if I'm going down the refrigerated section more, we've got these mozzarella uh, pseudo cheese, right? I have to be honest, I cook with this stuff now and then, and my wife cooks with it now and then because it actually melts like real cheese. 
Okay, so it gives you kind of that effect without a bunch of fat. It's pretty low calorie. Two grams of fat, I'm looking at 50 grams or 50 calories per one ounce serving. Compare that to like 150 to 200 calories for normal cheese. But fair warning, it says that it's an almond mozzarella cheese. It is 99% lactose free. It still has dairy in it, so it's not vegan friendly. Uh, it's an almond base, and then they add a little bit of casein milk to it, but then they do have some expeller pressed canola oil, which I'm not a fan of. It's gonna be hard for you to completely avoid canola oil, so just use it in moderation. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using a ton of this, but it is pretty cool stuff in terms of how it melts in the keto world, all right? All right, now we have sauerkraut. This is a big, big winner on keto, okay? Now the reason that I like the Trader Joe's ones is it's super clean. Cabbage, Persian cucumbers, sea salt, and garlic. Natural fermentation, no preservatives, no crazy stuff added to it. We need to get that probiotic effect in the gut. Remember how I talked about ketones having the effect on gut stem cells? Big potential gut restoration effects. If we get this, we add the good bacteria back into the mix. So what happens when you start keto, when you do intermittent fasting, your gut biome sort of resets. Bad bacteria dies, good bacteria continues to grow. This is gonna help feed that good bacteria. So good stuff, good quality stuff there. All right, now let's move on down the line. Refrigerated, we've got asparagus. Microwavable asparagus, is convenient. People are gonna say what they're gonna say about microwaves. But okay, we're doing keto on a budget, we're trying to teach you how to shop. Don't bag on the fact that this is microwavable. The microwave itself, in my opinion, isn't that bad. If anything, it's the plastics that you gotta worry about when you're microwaving in them. However, you use this in moderation. You use this when you're in a pinch. Asparagus is one of those things that, unless you're gonna eat it raw, it's pretty hard to cook in a hotel room, or it's pretty hard to cook when you just don't have a half an hour to dedicate to grilling it or broiling it or whatever you're gonna do. So these are super cool, and these are usually a go-to for me when I'm traveling or in a pinch. Same kind of thing with the Brussels sprouts. Now, the nice thing about the asparagus, we're getting heavy, heavy prebiotic fiber effect. So remember how I told you your gut biome's resetting? This is gonna help rebuild. Probiotics add bacteria in, prebiotics encourage the growth of existing bacteria. So if you're first starting keto, you wanna wait for a couple of weeks before having asparagus because you want your gut biome to reset a little bit and then add this in. And then Brussels sprouts, I just love my Brussels sprouts, honestly. High amounts of methane, indole 3 carbonyl, uh, combats excess estrogen in the body, just good stuff. Cruciferous veggies in general. Okay, moving on down the line. Let's go into the frozen section for just a second. A few things that you definitely need to be aware of, and I'm just gonna call them right out. Sneaky cauliflower. It's not always the same when we have cauliflower in a label than when it's just pure cauliflower. Like this is a perfect example. I fell victim to this. I bought these for my kiddo thinking, oh cool, these are gonna be keto. He's not even keto, but I just thought that. And then I went to have one and I was like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Cauliflower, broccoli, potatoes, cornstarch. It's mainly potato to be completely honest. The potato is giving it the bulk. So these kind of things, be super careful of. Definitely not going to work on keto. All right, now let's move on down the frozen line. Cauliflower stir fry. This can be a staple, but I have to say, full disclaimer, you're gonna sit there picking out peas and carrots because those things add up. You ever wonder why you look at this, four and a half servings per container, seven grams of carbs per serving, you're looking over 30 grams of carbs in this thing. That's gonna kick you out of keto. But if you're picking out the, uh, the carrots and you're picking out the peas, you'll be good. I appreciate that they use tamari instead of uh, soy sauce. So basically we're getting a non-gluten effect. So this can stay in the picture, but you just gotta be careful, okay? I'm gonna leave it here, but you're gonna be picking out peas and carrots, all right? This one, this is like blasphemy, okay? This, this upsets me. Trader Joe's does such a good job, but then this one kinda, eh, man. Cauliflower mashed potatoes. I remember, I was like, these have to be legit. I didn't even look at the label. I got them. I was so excited. I took a couple bites after I cooked them. You, there's little discs. You put them in the microwave. You cook them. But then I'm like, wait a minute. This is too good to be true. Ingredients. Cauliflower, milk, water, rice flour, half and half, then a bunch of cream. So not only is it loaded with non-organic dairy, that could be an issue anyway, it's got rice flour as like the third ingredient. So no wonder why one serving has seven grams of carbs because you got rice flour. So not only are you getting the carbs, but you're getting the grains, which are gonna have a prolamin effect, kind of a cross-contamination effect, triggering a gluten-like reaction in the body where you have something called zonulin that elevates in the body, triggering a leaky gut. Long story short, massive inflammatory response from grains when you've been off of them for a while. I don't need to bore you with a lot more details. This one, oh, this one makes me laugh. 
Okay, and I'm sorry I'm picking on you, Trader Joe's, right now, but come on, I'm giving you a lot of good credit here, too. I just got to call out the nonsense. Cauliflower crusts from Trader Joe's. Cauliflower, corn flour, water, corn starch, potato starch, olive oil, salt. Six servings per container. One sixth of the crust, 17 grams of carbs. Not going to fly, okay? I can't even do math fast enough to tell you how many carbs are in this whole pizza. So, got to, sorry, this is out, okay? Just be careful, because these things are hidden everywhere, and I'm only touching the tip of the iceberg here. So we've already narrowed it down. Now let's go back to the positive stuff. Uh, coconut oil spray, always good to cook with. Coconut oil is nice and stable to cook with. A couple of bucks, it's like 250 or 299 or something for this, and it lasts you a long time. We've got Chomps. I get these because, A, I love the guys over at Chomps. I know the CEO really well, I know the founder. Just good guys, and I know that they have really clean just snacks. So if you're trying to get some stuff that's for on the go, you have to swing through a Trader Joe's, Chomp sticks are awesome. This is a unique thing that Trader Joe's has. These are little packets of olives in olive oil. Now, two servings in a container, 50 total calories, five grams of fat, and less than a gram of carbohydrates. Perfect, and you're getting the good solid fats that you want. Well, not literally solid, but you're getting the monounsaturated fats that you need. Really powerful stuff. And what that's going to do is you're going to have the monounsaturated fatty acids that are very good at fighting uh, oxidative stress within the body, but also have some other powerful effects when it comes down to palmitoleic acid, which I'll talk about in just a second too. So these are a nice little treat, inexpensive, good to go. I put this here. This is the chili sauce. I love this because it has no sodium. I'm not anti-sodium. In fact, I tell people to load up on sodium but it tastes so good without salt. You can cook your ground beef in this, your ground pork in this, or with it, and you don't even, it's like you don't even need to add salt. So if you're ever trying to reduce sodium or increase your sodium-potassium ratio or potassium-sodium ratio, this might be the way to roll. Uh, I also like that they have an inexpensive liquid stevia. You go to Whole Foods and get liquid stevia, you're gonna pay $25. This is like six bucks or seven bucks, and it's gonna last you forever. There's 461 servings in this, and it's stevia in uh, organic stevia, deionized water, and 11% organic alcohol, just as a suspension. Add this to your coffee. This is the way to go. That way you're not dealing with the powders that have maltodextrin. The stevia powders are suspended in dextrose or maltodextrin. Liquid's the way to go, almost always. Nutritional yeast, big winner. Okay, Dr. Eric Berg, good friend of mine, always talks about his nutritional yeast, right? That's the way to go. High levels of vitamin B, high levels of thiamine, all kinds of different vitamin B. So we've got B12, but we've also got a good source of iron too. So we've got just a lot of good stuff going on here. What I do is I cook up my asparagus and I sprinkle this on it and mix it up and it makes it taste like I've got cheesy asparagus. Just amazing benefits of nutritional yeast and asparagus combined, by the way. Okay, macadamias. Why are macadamias on my list? Because when it comes down to nuts, they're probably the best. Okay, good amounts of palmitoleic acid, good amounts of monounsaturated fats, and they're probably the only source of nut that has a true profound source of omega-7s and omega-9s, the palmitoleic acid, which converts into something known as OEA, oleolinethylalamide, which I can never say, it's a mouthful, OEA, which has a positive effect on the pancreas. To make matters very, very short for the sake of this video, macadamia nuts should be your go-to because they have low phytic acid content, high omega-3 content, and they help your pancreas and they help your beta cells produce insulin more efficiently, which is one of the bigger reasons why we do keto in the first place. Last but not least, always by the check stand, not all Trader Joe's have this, this stuff is amazing. Unsweetened baking chocolate. Okay, it's not even baking chocolate, but 100% dark, no sugar, no sweeteners, with 100% dark cocoa nibs in it. It is bitter, it is not sweet, but man, does it taste good if you are into just bitter chocolate. Some of you probably think I'm nuts right now, but the effects of theobromine that are in dark chocolate are proving to be so beneficial for fat loss above and beyond just the endorphin rush that you get from this. Because there is phenylethylamine in this, which helps you feel good. But in my opinion, it's the theobromine that's giving you the health benefit. So anyhow, that about sums it up. I don't think I missed anything. Now you know what to get at Trader Joe's and kind of what to avoid, or at least where to open your eyes a little bit more. And if you enjoyed this video and you got some benefit out of it, I encourage you to check out my other grocery haul videos where we get kicked out of grocery stores, where we have fun, and I teach you how to shop healthfully. And as always, make sure you keep it locked in and check out Thrive Market down below in the description to get some of this good stuff without going to the store. I'll see you soon.